Okay, so welcome to the March wave5trade.com webinar in support of um, the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite for Ninja Trader, Thinkorswim, TradeStation, and now MultiCharts as well. Um, great on all time frames, stocks, Forex, and futures. So I'm going to go through some of the different platforms, uh, stocks, Forex, and futures, different time frames. And again, this is about uh, supporting you guys as well. Hi, Tao. How are you doing? Um, also, I want before I go on, I want to make the announcement because I know Tao's already booked this already. He's in he's in this webinar already. He's already booked my live trading in Chicago already. Okay. Um, so you basically come and trade the fifth with me for the day in Chicago. Uh, Tao's already booked. I know there's a few others. Um, basically, what we're going to work be working on is a new strategy. That I've developed with this indicator suite uh, for trading futures and bonds on smaller time frames. It's working very well. We're trialing it in the trade room right now and, and within the inner circle that I that I uh, run, and it's working very well. Uh, we'll be looking at um, trading the fifth, consolidating strategy for medium or long-term trading and investing. Um, looking at multiple time frames to capture those ultra high probability fifth weights. Um, Blend investing strategy, I use it very well with my inner circle and you can use the Elliott Wave Indicator Suite to uh, get a really good blend investing portfolio going together as well. We're doing lots of Q&A, lots of teaching, classroom environment, there's only been a maximum of 20 in there. So lots and lots of um, sort of want, you know teaching uh, and getting, getting this strategy down. Uh, we're getting down and dirty with some uh, new version tools. Uh, we're going to do live trading stocks, sports and futures because it's on a Friday, Friday the 18th of May, uh, flying all the way from here in Spain to Chicago. Uh, you'll get a free uh, Way 5 Trade t-shirt and you get to spend the whole day with me. It starts with breakfast in the morning at 8 o'clock, uh, lunch is included uh, and then we finish about 4.30 in the afternoon. So a full day, should be good, really looking forward to it. Um, hopefully some of you can attend. I know some of the guys that have come in have never been to Chicago before, even though they're in the US uh, and are um, coming along. So that's the link there to register. I will remind you again later in the session. Okay, so let's get going. Now, LB, most of you know I've got a the way five trade signals uh, membership for stocks. Now, this pulls in weekly, daily, and 60 minute time frame uh, potential shorts and longs every day in scanner results. Uh, LB is one of those from a couple of days ago for potential short on the 60 minute, and this is where it is right now. Okay, uh, that entry line is wrong, it should be 43.98. But very, very simple this. I'm going to zoom out for a minute just to make sure that the isolation, knew, you know where it was um, for those. And, and even if you're not trading stocks or um, you, if you're trading futures and Forex, this is very useful to know. So we've got this big range bound period up here at the top. But it's not going anywhere in the lead up to earnings. OK, so this is more of an earnings pay, uh, a reaction to earnings. So if I just put in that zone there and highlight that. So basically after earnings, this gap down made those new lows where the wave three is. So usually in stocks, we get a little bit of uh, rangy low volume play before earnings. Earnings was poor. So we had the gap down. This is the 60 minute chart. So in essence, we've started a bearish trend with this gap. We've hit the wave three and then it's pulled back against there. It's found resistance really near the high of that first bar after the gap down. In the amber's pullback zone, isolating it right, right just before the gap down is, is more than enough because that's near the highs. You've got the wave four in the amber zone. It's the 80% pullback zone. So it finds resistance in there and then simply just looking for a good entry. 
we've got to be below the 6.4 moving average low. That is a must, okay? But also we need to consider previous price action. So in this day here, we got a nice little support level. It needed to be below that. I like to be below whole dollar marks as well. That's one of my things. Uh, so the entry was at 43.98. It did enter yesterday, went flat, and then today sold off like a bullet. And we're on it like a rocket right now. This is where it is right now. Uh, you know, it's below $42 now. Hopefully now we should see this get into, uh, I'd like to get take this profit before the end of the week. I don't want to carry it over. Even if I don't reach the wave um, five trade automated target zone down here in the blue, still want to be thinking about taking profit. If I can get to 41.38, for example, that's a 1.6% win on my trading account balance. 2% uh, is into the target zone, that would be fantastic. Uh, but I think at the moment, what's uh, ES doing at the moment? Is it selling off a bit? Uh, it's pretty low. So at the moment still heading down, but you'll usually find on this, it might have a little bit of a rest towards the end of the session. But that's just a prime example from the signals membership, how to set something up. This is a 60 minute chart on LB. I'm using the Ninja Trader, but it doesn't really matter which platform you use, it's all the same. And we are just looking for that short, both short and longs. Uh, another example is XEL for today. It's not triggered yet, okay? This is the video I made. I make a video every day in the um, Signals membership area. It is free for anybody. Uh, Ram, which template, uh, what are you talking about now? The, the template for... Um, my screen um I, I don't understand what you're saying do you use the ninja trader are you using ninja trader yeah okay so right what i did in preparation when i first got ninja trader is i so for example the the pullback zone here no, yeah, we'll do it in a little while, but I will show you how to set up the templates for risk to reward, the 535 oscillator, that sort of thing. You set them up as templates, it makes it easier when you're working through, okay? Um, so, no problem. So with XEL, let's zoom out again. Quite a way this time. This is a 60 minute chart as well. When we've got, um, really sort of volatile markets that are news driven at the moment. Trump says something, Trump does a dump, something happens. Okay. So range bound period again up here. Now it breaks out and moves down. That's the trend. That's where to isolate your, your Elliott wave count. So it comes down on a wave three, finds resistance in the amber zone, amber stroke green zone there. So you've got an 80 to 85% probability it's going to go on and make a new wave low. So, Exactly the same sort of setup here. We look for a stop loss just above the wave four. Very, very simple. Okay. And then with me today, really, we could have gone short below the 6.4 moving average low. I just don't like this big green first hour from, from yesterday. So um, that for me, um, needs to my entry needs to be below that so really 24 21 was the entry to date not taking it in yet that's fine uh, it needs to make its way down it closed all the way up here at 24.95 yesterday and it's coming down so it could trigger today if not tomorrow uh, we've still got the risk reward of 1 to 1.6 into our target zone there which is important so where did I isolate the wave count for um, for here? Okay. So we've got a really big range here, Tau. Uh, I'm going to lose the size of the numbers when I do that. But you need to be doing it just before um, just before the the the, the, the mo it moves down. Okay. All this is roughly the same. It's a range bound period. It's not a trend. So I need to be uh, isolating it just about here, okay? So 
two or three candles or even the candle just before the breakdown there and you'll still get the same weight count. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we don't want to be isolating it all the way over to the left because we don't want to be counting all this correction. It's not, we're not interested in it. It's just not interesting. Um, but what we are interested in is this short term trend. Okay. Does that make sense, Tao? Yeah. Okay. Right. Also, we look at the 535 oscillator um, down the here at the bottom. That was nice. Let's zoom in on that one. That's crowned lovely now. So that's between 19 and 140%. It's crowned and it's moving its way back down. So that means the five and the 35 uh, moving averages are moving closer together again to cross, uh, which is good because we're looking to go short. So we're looking to them to cross negatively. So let's just zoom back in again now. So that's making its way down pretty well. So that's two examples of stocks on 60 minute time frames. Okay. Just one more example using NinjaTrader on the longer term. So this is on the weekly time frame. We've had some, you know, we've had a lot of weeks down here in rangey. Then finally we pull back uh, out of there and we're in a bullish trend. This is EXAS on the weekly time frame. The wave three, the wave falls pull back into the amber zone, found support. Also at a previous sort of resistance level as well. That's important to note. So that makes that a really strong uh, level. We've got the 535 oscillator, uh, you know, between 90 and 140. And we've got the uh, stochastic crossing over there. So good looking setup. This is weekly. So we could be, once this triggered, we could be in this up to 20 weeks. Um, you do like the daily videos. Good, Trevor. I, I don't want to leave you guys alone. You know, I do this for a living. I do it every day. So I don't, I got to run those scans every day for you. So I just pick one, whether it's on a weekly, a 60 minute, a long or a short. And what I try and do is mix them up so I can give you ideas of how to set those particular trades up. Okay. So with X, EXAS, those are trading options on a weekly time frame. You need to be looking about 20 to 25 weeks options expiry for trading the fifth wave on a weekly time frame, just to be aware of that. Trevor, uh, you want me to look at BAC and MA? Yeah, let's have a look at that. Let me just have a cup of tea. Okay. Um, let's duplicate in a new tab. And we look at BAC. So this is the weekly. Oh, that's quite parabolic, that move, isn't it, really? And look at on the daily. Let me just put that, let's isolate that count there anyway. Um, that's just blown through uh, the fifth wave. You usually get that when it's parabolic. Um, but when this fifth wave here on the weekly gets longer than this third wave, it will be reprinted a wave three. So those that got in, for example, here, this is why some people say, how can I trade the wave three? There is a couple of options and we'll be covering those in Chicago. But one of the simplest options is you get a really a good shallow pullback like this just into the zones. You go long, goes through the fifth wave target and then just goes parabolic and literally almost straight up 
then as soon as that fifth wave goes longer than the third wave, it's reprinted a wave three and you, you, you're really in the money then. Uh, and that, that can happen very, very often. Uh, but there's no trade there. So let's have a look on the daily on uh, BAC um, or a closer look, see what's going on. So again, we need to be down near, near these lows really. Yeah, so this is where we are right now. Um, we've probably missed the entry. It looks pretty messy, really. Not all of them look really nice and pretty. I'm afraid that's not trading. Um, let me just get that. So we had a nice oscillator pullback on the 535, as you can see down the bottom, but the stochastic did not cross over in the oversold zone. So we need those two together, remember, for this strategy. So this was a low probability from this wave four low. And that's why we initially have failed to get into the wet fifth wave target. We could see this, we see the oscillator coming back down towards zero. We could well see this pulling back down and testing this wave four low again here. So in theory, what could happen is we could even test this low or even come a little lower, maybe into the red zone. We will then see the stochastic down at the bottom come into the oversold zone. Oscillator will be negative and red again between 90 and 140. Then we'd look for another opportunity to trade Trevor. But at this moment in time, this was a weak move because we didn't get the oscillator and the stochastic together. Why didn't we get the stochastic? Because that happened over a space of about four days. We need around about seven days profit taking gradually to get that stochastic to cross over. If it's violent and volatile like that with very large daily ranges, the stochastic's not gonna go down. So the move back up is gonna be muted. So what we need now is a more sensible pullback into that red zone. Does that make sense for BAC? And the type of wave four that was. Okay, so have a look at MA. Is that, is that right? Oh, this, we need to go, yeah. Now this is a very, this is in my, uh, this is in my blend, one of my, I'll give you, this is in one of my blend stocks. So um, the thing is with this, you've got to wait for pullbacks where we get the oscillator coming back down, as you can see there. Okay, so where my cursor is now, we've had a small pullback, oscillator pulled back, Os the, the stochastic wasn't really there. Um, very tough with a strong growth stock, okay? <laughs> I'm not psychic, Trevor, I'm not psychic. But one thing you have to remember, the ideal way for pullback is between seven and nine days or seven and nine candles, depending on the time frame. Okay. If you get a really violent pullback over a few days and very large rangy days, you must be very careful. Your 535 has to be good between 90 and 140 and your stochastic has to be crossed over as well in the oversold zone for longs over board zone. So those two together, with the wave four in the pullback zone, that's that's the, the the perfect storm, if you like. If you haven't got all of that and your stochastic is a bit shallow, you've got to be careful and sensible on your entry. So MA is a very strong growth stock. Very, very difficult to trade the wave four pullbacks on here. They do happen. Then we need to just change the data series on this. I want to go back quite a long way. So let's go back a thousand days. Okay, so when we go back a thousand days, you can see what I mean. This is the, by strong growth stocks. We get shallow pullbacks, okay? That's just tip the zone. So when you've got strong growth stocks like this and Visa, for example, uh, you've got to be ready. You've got to have 
So we zoom into this bit here. So we just tipped the pullback zone here, okay? We got the 535 looking very good. Now the, the stochastic didn't marry up. So this is the case where not all of them work, but it's a very, very strong goat growth stock. Stock uh, that up until this point, there was no really big daily ranges. Um, this, this was the corrective period here in February. Um, but with, with this, you've just got to think, right, this is good, this is go. I'm not going to wait for the six four moving average. I've rejected that wave four, and we've got to think about a little bit of candlestick patterns here. So we see the big red candle here, the green doji, bullish harami, okay? Pregnant lady, okay? With the, with the tummy down near the bottom, okay? That's a good bullish signal. We wait for one more day as confirmation, another green day, a higher high, higher low, pretty full body. And then you would enter just above that high there, okay? And that's where you would be going. Uh, there's a lot more involved to this. And when if you come to Chicago, uh, we'll be doing a lot of this when we talk about blend investing, okay? Um, and buying the pullbacks and, and putting your portfolio together and how to do that. But this is just the basics right now. So with MA at the moment, there's not a great deal there because we're at the highs. We need a pullback, okay? You could always, if you wanted to trade up for shorter time frame, go down to the 60 million and look for pullbacks there. Yes, I, yeah, it doesn't surprise me. The Trump dump. Okay, now, so let's go for some Forex. Um, let's, uh, so George, you, you, George, do you use TOS or Ninja Trader or TradeStation, whichever? Let me know. Oh, Q and A up the top there. TOS, right, George. I'm going to show you how to construct it on TOS. That's easier. So let me just um, bring. TOS over. You need a big computer to um, to run all four at the same time and all the other stuff. Let me move that one out of the way where my mouse, mouse will collect it. There we go. Right. So. Right, you want to use Forex, Euro, US dollar, okay? What sort of time frame? What sort of, uh, one hour, okay? Or H4. Ooh, that's nice. Let's have a look at that. Uh, let's just zoom into that bit there. You'll have to bear with me because you can imagine I use these, try and use all these four and my e-signal and lots of other software. So I'm not the best <laughs> at it, um, but I get there in the end. So, um, so first of all, let's talk about isolating wave counts, George, first, because we have got um, sort of, I would say, range bound periods here. So longer term, this is quite a long trend, but I would say this is a range here. We've got this cup and handle um, effect here, and we need to be really isolating the bar count at the start of this, at these lows. We've got this double bottom here, so we need to be isolating the bar count at the bottom of this cup and handle um, chart pattern, if that makes sense. So let's look at, firstly, where that bar count is. There is 753. So with the TOS, we do it slightly different. 
did I say 703 or 793? No, we can't because uh, Think or Swim doesn't allow, does not allow the, um, the mouse to be used to isolate bar counts. We have to use the wave counter um, in there. I probably, I probably was 703. Where, where are we now? Ah. Did I get that right? Seven, five, three. Been a long day. Probably won't change that much actually. So this is the four hour Euro US dollar. So let's zoom into that bit here. Right, so we've zoomed in. Uh, we can have a look from that low. We can see some little moves there. They're not spectacular. Uh, I mean, it's an ugly looking chart, Euro, US dollar at the moment. Because we've had this high and then this, this pivot comes below here. So it, it's resetting the wave count all the time, George. That's the problem with, here, with this. We're resetting the wave count because we keep getting these deep pullbacks that break the rules. Um, so there's been no really good trade on opportunities so far on that. Um, and we've had this wave one, wave two, and potentially now we're going to go short, you know, on that four hour chart. That's, you know, that's the issue there. I don't see any really good trading opportunities that have arisen from there because we're getting the pullbacks that are breaking the Elliott wave rules there. Uh, let's go to the one hour. Let's just go from this high here for a minute. What's that? 407. Remember, we this the Elliott wave is to um, identify what's happening in a trend. If there's no trend, there's there's no Elliott wave count or no proper Elliott wave count. As you can see on the hourly here, this is where we are right now. So we've had really really poor performance on uh, on on euro us dollar it's just not good i think i got that the wave count wrong there um you know so we need to isolate it at these lows now so where are we six three four you know there's no real fifth wave trade setting up on this at the moment uh, what was it again what was that low Six 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 three four. But you will invariably find across the currency pairs something that is trending very well and pulling back. And you've got lots of time frames to choose from. So there we go. We've had that move here on the hourly recently from the lows of isolated bar count. We've had the wave three, the wave four, hit the wave five, and now it's going static. So let's zoom in to the 535 oscillator and how to measure that, okay? I've already got it set up, so bear with me, because uh, it. I basically, let me just clear that. And clear that. So drawings, you go to your fib extensions. 
So to get this, we need to be at the highest point of the wave three. Okay, George, on the 535. Then we need to be at the zero line. Then we need to go back to the highest point on the wave three, okay? And as you can see here, the, the pullback was, in fact, between the 90 and the 140%. Now, I've set that up as my standard template, okay? Uh, I believe you know how to, to do that on TOS? Yeah, okay. So highest point on the wave three to the zero, back to the highest point on the wave three. And you can see here where the wave four pulled back, we were between the 90 and 140%. So that's good. Stochastic crossed over in the oversold zone. Uh, so where would the entry be and where would the stop loss be? Okay, so stop loss for this needs to be below the wave four low, okay? Um, so we need to be something like that. Stop loss there. And your entry needs to be breaking out of the 6-4 moving average. Now, didn't quite make it here and then pulled back. So sensibly, you would go above this high or you could go more aggressively just here. Drawing tools aren't brilliant on, on TOS, I must admit. Um, so two trains of thought. We go conservative, just above this high. Why is that not working? There. Or you go more aggressive, just outside the 6-4 moving there, average there for the, uh, for the high. To manage this, two ways of doing it. You look at, as soon as you get these higher support levels here, uh, you adjust your trailing stop, okay? So we can use the 6-4 moving average low as a trailing stop, or we can go for previous support levels, Why is that not drawing? There. Uh, now, we come up, we come down, and once we beat this high, this is how to use a trailing stop. Once we've beaten this line here, that then becomes your trailing stop. Okay, so you're always a couple of support levels behind. Okay. So we enter. We pull back, we go higher than this point here, so we put our trailing stop almost at break even there, okay? It pulls back down, forms a higher support level. As soon as it goes through that pivot, we adjust the trailing stop to there, and then obviously we're hitting the target zone right there. So that then when it hits the target zone, not necessarily getting out all the time, you wanna be looking at then using your 6-4 moving average low, as a trading stop, and that's where you would have been taken out just here. Okay? Good. Let me just change that back. Can't learn everything overnight. That's why I'm doing this special event in Chicago for the whole day, because it's about sitting down, and, you know, this is a strategy that I've been trading for 14 years. And what I've done is taken that strategy and put it into different bits of software. So it's not just an indicator suite, it's a strategy. Uh, and that's why I want to sit down with people, with serious traders, for a whole day and really go to town on this, build those strategies up using different time frames, do some investing type strategies as well, and also futures uh, trading as well. So, uh, you, you know, it takes time to learn. Um, but it is, it really does work very, very well. So any more Forex pairs you want to look at, George, before we go and have a look at futures?
US dollar Japanese yen. Oops, hang on, I didn't put the uh, Ujima flop in there. There we go. Ooh, that's been a bit of a, uh, what's that, uh, 177. So I've isolated the high there. So you've missed a very good short just recently. So, um, but it's not to say there's going to be another, not another trade on a different time frame or this time frame either. Uh, so let's just zoom in there and talk through this process. Again, this is a moment in time right now when I'm doing this webinar. Uh, I can't guarantee that somebody ready for a fifth trade. Um, but let's just go through this uh, setup again. We got a nice move down from those highs got the wave three wave four pulled back into the amber zone um, let's just get my mouse working again so lots of ways here but remember the ultimately the trailing stop is above the wave four so even though we enter coming out even if we go aggressive outside the 6.4 moving average low here, when it pulls back, it's a higher resistance level. It doesn't take out the stop loss. And then it moves back down. It just about reaches the way five trade target, pretty close. Uh, there, are, there, are suggest there are ways of trading the third wave, but, and I'll tell you this now, the reason why I call it wave5trade.com and trade the fifth is because it's the highest probability move. It's not the sexiest move. It's not the biggest impulse leg, but it's more predictable. So if you've had the wave one, the wave two, the wave three, the wave four pullback and all the rules we set aside for that wave four pullback with oscillators, stochastics, the pullback zones and everything, then the probability of that wave five happening is very high. Now, when you're in the rounds of trying to uh, trade that initial uh, wave three stage, we could only be in a corrective stage and it may fail very quickly. You can't know at, the, at that point that it's going to go on a wave three. Like I said earlier, with stocks or with, with Forex or futures, a lot of the time you get in a fifth wave move and it goes beyond the target and then turns into a wave three. That it's not by chance that happens 70 to 80 percent of the time. OK, um, if it doesn't happen, you've still made good money. Um, but you're always doing the risk reward of one percent risk. So you are going to then hit the target, at, you know, risk reward of one to one point six or whatever. It's going to be difficult, Trevor, because it's going to be there all day. That, that's correct, George. Yes, you, you, you're in the rounds of 50-50 uh, when you're trying to trade that initial wave three, whereas you're in the 80%, 85% probability when you're trading the fifth wave. Okay, so Trevor, back to Chicago. Um, it's going to be difficult because I'll be doing it all day. Um, and I did inquire how much it would be for somebody for, to film it for the day and it's bloody expensive, okay? I'm only charging $500 per seat and there's only gonna be 20 people there uh, and that would all just about cover somebody to come in and record it and edit it for the whole day, which is ridiculous. Um, so I've got to try and figure a way around it at the moment, but at the moment, you know, it's my first ever live in-person training anywhere. Um, I'm in Chicago with my um, inner circle for two full days, the Saturday and the Sunday. So I've just extended the, the meeting room hire for an extra day and put on this wave five trade training because I won't be in the US again this year because my next training is in Europe in September. Um, so 
I will try and do it, but the, the thing, the, you know, if I do get it recorded, I will have to charge because it's not going to be cheap. Um, but I prefer it if as many people can make it. I've got a good rate on rooms in the hotel that I've booked and hopefully people can make it um, to get some really good training. So let's go away from TOS. Uh, anybody in here on TradeStation? Or shall I just go back to NinjaTrader? No takers for TradeStation, no one look at that. Okay, so let's go uh, NinjaTrader. Anybody trading futures here? So let's have a look at gold anyway. I want to go to the daily on gold for a minute. Trade NQ, let's go to NQ then. What do you use for trading NQ? Renko, tick, five minutes. There's so many different things, Elton. Let's, let's see if we can mirror what you use. Uh, FDAX, I'll do that in a minute, Fernando. Renko bars. So let's see if I can get this right because I don't do it very often. Right. So uh, Renko, what's the value? Two on NQ. Ooh, I don't know what you do, 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 do. Let's just do Elton first. Elton, what do you use for NQ? What time frame? What type of um, do you use? Renko, tick, ticks, 250. That's loading. Ooh, look where we are right now. Freaky. <laughs> now, this wasn't planned, guys. I don't know, Elton. Um, but uh, great wave four pullbacks happening right now on NQ. It's pretty deep. And to be honest, we've got some range bound periods here. Uh, this is a longer term uh, from these lows here. Uh, no, that's rangy there. You see, this is the problem. We've got loads of range. Uh, that's, I think that's where we're better looking at there. Okay. I'll tell you why, Elton. At this current time, you can see how deep this pullback. This is not a wave four. Okay. Uh, this is uh, too deep. So I've isolated at these let's see this double bottom here this range okay let's draw it in just to make sure because uh, it doesn't matter whether it's tick red go five minute time frame daily you need to be getting out of this range this is not this is a range it's not a trend but then we start to move up and then we pull back so we isolate here so we'll, we'll go to where we are right now in a minute um, but just to show you on the Renko here, we've got a nice oscillator pullback. It's reasonably deep, um, but again, I don't trade Renko, so I don't know how those pullbacks behave. So let's just measure it. I've got my templates on Ninja Trader. Yep, 
between 90 and 140%. Fantastic. Stochastics crossed over. Wave four, quite deep, but found support here. And your entry would have been, let's put it in, here. So this would happen real time. Okay. Now we get this range. You identify it's rangy. As soon as it starts to break out of this range, these highs, okay, you isolate your bar count there, okay? So this could be live right now, and you would, you would see this is broken out, so you isolate your wave count. It will wave, you will count it. I know it does this because I do it on ES on five minute because I've been developing a strategy. Then it pulls back, gives you the pullback zone, the wave four. You do your measurements. You look for your entry above this pivot high here. I mean, that's for me conservative. Uh, and then there's your fifth wave target. Bounces off there, comes down and goes sideways then. Does that, does that make sense, Alton, what I did there? Okay. So imagine this was real time. You, you're rangy and then it breaks out of that range with a big move. Isolate your, then you isolate your, bar, your wave count. It then pulls back and all this will happen real time. Find support. Then you've got to decide an entry. For me, I'm going to zoom in here. It's got to be above this pivot, this first attempt to break out the 6-4 moving average high. So that would be my entry here. And then I'd be long into the fifth wave target. And if you wanted to use the 6-4 moving average low for your trading stop, that's where you would be unless you took target. Um, and then well, where we are right now is we went sideways and then we've had a real volatile time here. So there's, again, this is not a trend, okay? This is a correction. What we need to do now is we've got to wait for the next trend, whether that's up or down. We have a range-bound period forming. Good time now to wait out, yes. Uh, but it, uh, I, would let, I would definitely look at this range first, okay? Two good levels there, yeah. Previous day's um, uh, high, I think, or something like that. Uh, and then you've got this um, level. So we've been very rangy today. So what you're looking for now is to sit back and wait. Look for it either to move and break up, big move, isolate your bar count. Yes, I will, George, yeah. And then if it goes down, you've got to isolate your bar count. So let's just go back and use this example for isolating the bar count for George here. Right, George. Say this is in real time. Could be a five minute chart. Doesn't matter. We're rangy. Yeah. You could start your, your bar count there when, it, when you're real time, but it comes back down. Okay. And then we're rangy, and then until it moves out above these highs here, we can't call it a trend. Once we see the trend, we know we're in a wave three. So we can then isolate the bar count down at these lows, okay? So whether it's, you know, here. So it's a starting point, yeah? I mean, it doesn't matter if it's there. That's the slightly new low. It just shows you the AB correction before the one, two. But the main thing is what you're looking for is the move out of the range. So that's the wave three. And if that's in real time, you isolate your bar count, you sit back and you watch. That's right. You're looking for that major swing point up or down. Uh, and then you're looking for the pullback against that swing. And then this, went, this is when the indicator sweep really comes in. So you've isolated it. It then prints your pullback zones and your automatic target zones. Okay. So FDAX was the next one. And we use, uh, I don't know whether it's on here or not. Let's have a look. Unirenko. It's not, I don't think it's on here. Let me, no. If 
Fernando, Unirenko is not on here. Would Renko do or not? Please let me know. All right, third party. Um, shall we go on just on the, let's just go simple. Yeah, on the five minute. <laughs> so <laughs> let's keep it simple. Uh, but it doesn't matter what you use. I've just showed you tick, I'm going to show you candlesticks in a five minute. It doesn't matter. Okay, you're looking for those breakouts and those pullbacks. Tau, I, yes, I can do that once I've just gone through uh, FDAX on the five minutes. Just want to zoom out a little bit there. Just want to look for low points and trends. It's been, it's been, a bit, it's been very whippy, hasn't it? Whoops, what have I done there? Oops, hang on a minute. I think I pressed the wrong button. Right, let's go back to five minute. I wasn't looking at my keyboard. I think I pressed the wrong button there. Okay. Right, so we have got a trend there, but we came back down and formed a double bottom here. So I see that as a starting point because what I see on FDAX is we've pulled down, we've come back down, made a double bottom, and then we've gone parabolic out of there. Okay, we've literally gone parabolic out of there. So um, that's where you start your wave count. Uh, we got the wave four pullback into the target zone. You could have traded that quick move up, um, but again, it's right back down in here again. So you would be looking for another entry. And that's the, sometimes the thing with DAX, because DAX is bloody, it can have some really, really big moves. Um, so you've got a big parabolic move there. It's pulled back against it into the green zone. And again, you've got to look at previous support levels here, even on the five minutes. Let me go here. Look, look at this range period here. That's where it found support. There's no coincidence there. That is a specific price level. So you've got to be quick on DAX. Uh, unlike NQ and ES, you know it moves really, really quickly. So you get that indecision doji, bullish harami again, confirmation bar the next one, and then you get in here just above this rectangle, and then you go along into the target zone, okay? You're out, it pulls back, it found support again at that same level in our green zone, okay? No coincidence there, you're looking for a breakout. You've already made money on this, so where are you gonna go along now? probably above this pivot point here for a shorter scalp into that uh, zone again, Fernando. Does that look good? Okay. So let's take that off and bring stocks on and look for trading stops. Okay, so let me move that down out there out of the way. Let me bring stocks over. In fact, let me use the trade station version because I want to use as many as I can. Let's bring that down. So this is a recent trade on the 60 minute with FCX. Again, it was in the signals membership and I did make a video before this one triggered. Okay, so standard setup there. I want to go big on here just to show you where I would have, how I managed this trade, because I traded this. Okay, so let's just put our entry in. I remind myself where the drawing tools are on this now. <laughs> uh, let's go over here. Okay, so entry here was 
there. Okay, so we had the wave four pullback as normal. Uh, we got the 535 between 1940. We this was the wave four here. Um, and then we came back down, find a higher support level, and then eventually I went as it crossed the the six four moving average high, failed there. So I just went above this high here. Okay, so we're in the trade. Let's change this now to red just to show you how I would trade this. So I'm just going to use this as a, um, a trailing stop position, if you like, how I traded the trade. Let's make it a bit fatter so you can see it. Okay, you see that? Right, so we entered here. Bit of a pullback, starts to go higher, pulls back finds support near the entry level now so this is the first thing once we then break this pivot point here and let's put these little things on here just to show you um, arrow. so once we break that high okay that's when we would bring our trailing stop to almost break even okay just below this support level so we're in it's come up it's come down it's come back up and it's gone above this pivot level so that's when we adjust the first trailing stop and that's almost a break even it's almost a risk-free trade okay so then we make a new pivot high we make a higher support level, and then as soon as we break this pivot, we bring our trailing stop underneath that support level because we've gone above this high here. So now we're into the target zone. So for me, I took profit. This was a 60 minute time frame. in it for three days, hit the target, get out, okay? 1.6% profit on the account balance, Simple trade, really, really easy, okay? So another thing you can do now, once we've got that uh, support level, gets the new wave five high, comes down, we got the support level here, it doesn't breach that high again. So another opportunity to take profit. If you don't wanna take profit, you're now in the rounds of this support level, at the 6.4 moving average low as your trailing stop. Because up until this point, the 6.4 moving average low is a very conservative trailing stop. But now it becomes part of your aggressive strategy. Uh, to be honest, if you didn't take profit there, this should have been a sign of exhaustion for you here, Tao, to get out, okay? Because he didn't breach this new, this previous wave five high. You've got these indecisions doges, when you look at the volume as well, you'll find that that volume's lower and you've got that signs of exhaustion in your target zone, so you get out. Does that make sense, Tal? Yeah? Same applies to the daily. Um, which trade have we just recently done on the daily? Um, I'm trying to think now. Oh, trying to think. Bear with me a minute. I just do so many trades. <laughs> um, uh, uh, uh. Right, let me just pause the recording a minute. Right, so this is the daily time frame. Um, not everybody can make it, so I do, do need to record it, Trevor, yeah. So, um, again, just to remind you, if my mouse works, okay. So, original entry after the wave four support level here, we're gonna go above the here. Um, so, we go entry here, then it starts to move, makes a slightly new high, and then pulls back. As soon as it goes past this high, 
bring your trading stock to just slightly below break even, you know, just below this support level here, or is the support level behind? Okay. Then we get the parabolic move. We don't get any pullbacks or support levels. We got a little bit of indecision in there, but then we carried on. So if we get that indecision day in the target zone, just either take profit or bring your trading stop just below the target zone because your target zone is a support resistance zone. Okay. Then once it starts to move higher, we got two options. We can stay below the low of two candles behind. So when this candle closes, we put the trading stop here. When the next candle close, we put the trading stop here. And then when the next candle closes, we see signs of exhaustion, we put the trading stop there. So then it comes back down and takes the trading stop out, or you can take profit at the ex exhaustion stage. Okay, so that, that's another way of, of trading it. So you're looking at initial moves up, initial support, and then when it moves back up past that pivot, bring your trading stop up and then just follow those support levels up until it takes your trading stop out. If it goes parabolic like this one, you literally uh, wait for it to go through, um, so show signs of exhaustion where you go. Yes, it was recorded Tau and it'll be up um, on the Wave 5 trade blog and in the Wave 5 trade signals membership area sometime tomorrow. I'm not doing it tonight because it's uh, 8.45 p.m. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for today, guys, anyway. So hopefully um, these monthly webinars are a help. Show you how to use the oscillator and the FIB retracement. So, yeah, uh, let me, which platform do you use, Trevor? And I'll use that one. TOS, Ninja, TradeStation. TOS, okay, so let's move that out of the way. Let's bring TOS back on. So let's go for EXAS. Um, what are we on the daily with that? Or the weekly, the weekly. Just want to isolate this lower minute, five, seven. I've got it wrong. Where is it? No, oh, it's not one, five, seven at all. It's around about 64. I got that totally wrong. Um, I don't know where I saw that. That looks better. <laughs> so we got the lows, range bound period, we moved up, wave three, wave four. Now, fib retracement. Okay, so the wave four's pulled back. We can see the 535's just pulled below the zero line here. So we need to do a fib extension so drawing tools this fib extension here fibonacci extensions okay so now we need the highest point on the oscillator of the wave three okay we click there we come down to the zero line oh did that that didn't click let me try that again Then we come to the zero line, okay? We go back up to the highest point on the way three. And there, that's predetermined for me. Uh, 90 is between the 90 and 140%. 
and I put that as my um, default, if you like. So when you right click on it, you can change it. You can put 90, 0.9, 1.4, green and purple. You can change the width of it like I've done on, the, on three there. And you can save that as your default. So if you click save as default, then whenever you use a fib uh, extension, you'll get the 90 and the 140. Okay? Does that make sense, Trevor? Or Ram, sorry. Or Trevor. No problem. Glad to help. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, hopefully it's been useful. George, this is a, uh, it's a, it's a specific measurement, okay, that over the years, lots of elioticians um, and traders like myself has found that that is the sweet spot between 90 and 140%, that 535 oscillator crowning for the wave four pull back into those particular fib levels, those zones that I put on there, that's the sweet spot. If it goes beyond the 140, it's too deep and it may never recover. Okay. Does anybody need, I'll just put it in anyway. Thank you. I'll put the link in. No problem. I'm going to put links in the Chicago. If you can make it, guys, I'm telling you now, it's worth the next year's webinars. You're with me all day trading the fifth. Lots of different strategies from trading to investing to blend investing to multiple time frames, using those together to get the really high probability fifth wave trades. If you can make it, please come. It will be a great day. Okay. So that's it for today. Um, enjoy the rest of your trading week, month, and I'll see you. Trevor, it's on the 18th of May, Friday the 18th of May. I've done it during a trading day. Going to do some live trading as well. Okay. It's in Chicago. All the details are on that link. Uh, it's at the Hyatt House Hotel, meeting room two. Um, I'm going to be there from the Wednesday with my wife. I'm there on the Saturday and Sunday with my inner circle in that same room. We're closed doors, planning session for two whole days. Um, and I'm, I don't go back to the Europe until the Tuesday. Uh, so uh, it's May the 18th, Friday, May the 18th. I have got a special discount code for the hotel as well. So if you're not from the area, I know Tao's already got it. He's, he's, left, he's left this webinar now. He's already got it and uh, it will give you a reduced room rate because there'll be obviously a lot of people going uh, with Wave 5 trade on the inner circle. Okay, so all, all that details on the link, a quick video clip of me doing a selfie video by my pool outside in Spain, uh, and then it tells you what it's all about. And hopefully you can make it because it'll be a really, really good day. Right, any more questions before I go?